Guys, what's going on? Welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath, and in this video, we're going to talk about some new releases from Mill Creek Entertainment. This is a huge release month for Mill Creek, uh, and so in this video specifically, we're going to be talking about the Steelbook Blu-ray debut of Mothra, the original kaiju classic. We're also going to be talking about two films from the Andy Sedaris collection, specifically Picasso Trigger and Savage Beach, both making their Blu-ray debut. And last, but certainly not least, Forever Night, the complete series. So we're gonna talk about all of that in this video in detail. But I wanna start with the one that I have been most passionate, most excited about. I'm talking about Mothra. This release, you guys, is at the crossroads of a lot of movie fans' wish list. Uh, monster movie fans, sci-fi fans, 60s movie fans, Japanese movie fans. A lot of people have been wanting Mothra on Blu-ray for a very long time. Finally, we have it. This is the original 1961 Toho Mothra. And it's very cool because it's getting the Steelbook debut, so it's prestigious, it's getting a lot of attention, deservedly so. Especially, you know, Mothra just made that huge splash in the... Uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters, and so good timing. Um, and there, are, I want to talk about it. So there's two two versions of the movie on this release. There's the original 1961 version, the Japanese 1961 version, and then there's a, a shorter, slightly shorter U.S. version because it was cut a little bit for the U.S. market. Uh, about 11 minutes are cut. So obviously the U.S. version English, uh, the Japanese version is in Japanese with English subtitles. So we have English subtitles. Um, there's also some pretty sweet bonus features on this. There's the uh, the original theatrical trailer, there's a photo gallery, and there's an audio commentary by two Japanese film historians and authors um, that's very informative. I listened to, I didn't listen to the whole thing, but I listened to a little bit of it and it was very, very informative. I gotta go back and finish it up. But I wanna show you guys this thing because it is gorgeous. So here's, here's the front. Let me try to get all the glare off of it so you can really admire it. And then here's the back. And then what I love about how Mill Creek does these still books is that the art is on this slip, the slip case kind of a thing, the slip cover. You take that off and you've just got this clean, beautiful steel book with the art, just that clean moth, that classic Mothra art. And then the back is a photo or screen capture from the movie itself of Mothra doing what Mothra does. Uh, and then I'll show you guys the inside as well. So the disc, even the Blu-ray looks good. You guys, that purple. Uh, I'm gonna take this disc off the hub here so you can see the, the complete background artwork. The twins from Infant Island. This is fantastic, you guys. I am so happy to have Mothra, the original Mothra in my collection. You guys know I love Godzilla. I love monster movies. We've done Godzilla videos, a few of them. Um, and so this is encouraging to me because this is a Toho movie getting an American Blu-ray release and I'm hoping that this is kind of a harbinger of things to come as far as classic Japanese monster movies getting like wide American distribution because some of this stuff, there's Godzilla movies I don't have. I have most of the Godzilla movies, but there are some that I don't have because it's just hard to get them in America. Rights are, are just kind of all over the place. So. If, hey, if nothing else, I have Mothra, but I would love to, to see more things like this. So hopefully if the sales are there, we will get future uh, Kaiju classics. So the next thing I wanna talk about is of course these Andy Sedaris movies. So these are the next two after, uh, you know, Mill Creek doesn't call these waves. These are my terms, but th this was like the first wave of uh, Andy Sedaris movies. These are the Malibu Bay films uh, releases. So he, he made 12 Malibu Bay films. Um, throughout the late mid to late 80s and then the 90s and uh, these were the first two in that cycle this was uh, Malibu Express and Hard Ticket to Hawaii and then now we have the next two we have Picasso Trigger and we have Savage Beach so uh, all four of these have been restored for blu-ray well, here's the the exciting part is in addition to these hitting now Mill Creek has already announced the next two in the Malibu Bay Films cycle. So there are two more of these coming in two more months. Um, and that will mean that half of the Malibu Bay Films have been given bl restored Blu-ray versions. 
Um, so hopefully, fingers crossed, if these sell well, you guys support these, and maybe we'll get all 12 on Blu-ray restored by the AFGA. Um, but these look great. Listen, we've talked about these before, right? So you guys know the drill. Andy Sedaris was um, shameless in his... So he came from sports. He's a sports innovator. But when it came to movies, uh, he had this great blend of... Uh, well, he cast Playboy Playmates with very little acting ability in lead roles. He cast these huge muscle-bound men, bodybuilders, soap opera actors. Um, and it was this weird mix of like skin movie with over-the-top, like, crazy over-the-top action. I've talked about some of the scenes from these movies before. I don't want to spoil anything for you in these movies, but they are ridiculous. But they're deliberately ridiculous. I know there's a trend. I see it all the time. There's a trend. We think they, this person couldn't possibly know how corny these movies are. Well, Andy Sedaris knew how corny his movies were because he made them that corny. He's the one telling the joke in the first place. And they are jokes. I mean, they are crazy. Absolutely exploitation. These are exploitation classics. Video store era classics. Um, some of the things. I'm talking about like dynamite on a remote control car up a surfboard, through a window, boom. Uh, that sort of thing, just so goofy, but just lovingly embracing the goofiness. So I'm so happy to have these. Uh, that means, again, you guys, look, there's one third of the Malibu Bay Films cycle uh, catalog. So that brings us to the last thing that I wanna talk with you guys about, and that is Forever Night, the complete series. So. In case you're not familiar with Forever Night, this was a syndicated television series in the early to mid 90s. Um, and it's about a vampire cop. He's a cop, but he's also a vampire. And it shot, it, listen, the 90s, especially that era of the 90s, think early X Files. Not like X Files movie era, early X Files. Um, but it's got that, it, like, it, it, it was just oozing with like alleyways, fog, smoke. In my market, because this was a syndicated show, so in my market, it came on very early in the morning, after, between Saturday night and Sunday morning, at like 1 a.m. in the morning, early Sunday morning, after Highlander the series. So I would record Highlander the series, and sometimes I'd catch a little bit of Forever Night on the recording after that, and I never saw it. it. I never managed to catch the whole thing. It was always just fragments, and so I was always really interested in it. And then one day, you know, they announced the Forever Night, uh, the Forever Night DVDs. And uh, so the, here's the thing: this this show came out on DVD years ago, and the third season. It's a three season show, and that third season has become impossible to find. I don't know if it's, I don't know why it went out of print. I don't know why the first two seasons seem to be readily available, but that third season was going for like a hundred bucks at one point in time. Well, now it's all in one package uh, for Mill Creek Entertainment. So here's the thing. Uh, Forever Night was never a beautiful show. It was always very soft. We're talking about standard definition. More than that though, it was a syndicated late night TV show, right? So it was never, um, like a, a network show. It was always a budget show. And so uh, as I was reviewing it, you know, I watched a few episodes of this and I will watch the whole thing, but I'm probably going to wait till uh, probably fall. This is the kind of show, in my opinion, this is a fall show. This is an October kind of a show. So I reviewed some of these and I'm going to put up some screenshots. I want you guys to be prepared. It doesn't look great, but here's the thing. I can tell you because I have this set, it never looked great. It always looked bad. This is a show that really could use like a Blu-ray presentation if they have the original elements, if it was shot on film. I don't know the circumstances behind the show. Maybe some of you guys will and you'll weigh, or you do and you'll weigh in the comments below about, uh, you know, was it shot on film? Did they edit on video? What's, what's the situation there? Um, but I kind of suspect, given the cult nature of this show, this might be the last stop for Forever Night. This Mill Creek presentation might be the last DVD release that it gets. Uh, and I would be happy with that. This is a 12 DVD set. Each disc has five to six episodes. They're an hour, hour long episodes. Uh, five to six episodes on a disc. And for this edition, by the way, I have to mention, some of you guys who love Forever Night are gonna be like, does it have the pilot? Does it have the original TV movie, Nick Knight? Uh, not Nick at Night, Nick Knight. Um, 
And unfortunately, no, it does not. I don't know what the rights issues are with this, but before Forever Night got picked up as a series, there was a, a TV movie uh, that starred Rick Springfield. Uh, that's right, that Rick Springfield, 80s singer Rick Springfield, uh, as Detective Nick Knight. And so I have this on DVD. It is not included in this box set. Again, probably a rights issue, probably something to do with uh, different rights holders. But um, let's just talk about this really quick as far as the packaging goes. This is a new package. So, you know, they started off with the plastic clamshells and the, uh, the paper sleeves. Then they moved to the, like a, the box that kind of separates with the, uh, the, the tray, like the, the paper uh, packaging inside. This is kind of a compromise. This is a, this is a hard cardboard case with a soft paper top so that uh, this is protected, but uh, the discs again are there in these things. So it's not my favorite, I have to be honest, but uh, I appreciate that they're trying to experiment with cost-effective solutions for their packaging. I, would, I was fine with the hard plastic clamshell cases with the paper sleeves. I was always okay with that, but you guys have weighed in and a lot of you were not. Um, as you can see, this, so this is this piece of paper is very flimsy at the top, and they just if you if you turn these upside down, they're going all over the floor. So you gotta be careful. But I wanted to I wanted to report on that for you guys because I know that that's a huge that's a huge issue with you guys. That's a talking point about Mill Creek releases. So that is what we're dealing with. I also have to mention before I forget, um, Picasso Trigger and Savage Beach both come with. Uh, let me block this out here because I'm going to do something with this. They both come with uh, movie spree codes. So this is Mill Creek's proprietary streaming service. Um, uh, movie spree, they, you get codes, you redeem the codes, just like Ultraviolet, Rest in Peace, or Voodoo, or Movies Anywhere, things like that. You redeem the code and you get a digital copy of that movie. So that's pretty cool that they have joined that digital... Uh, digital redemption program you can also purchase directly through that if you just want digital if you're only digital you don't have to buy the discs you can just pick stuff up from uh from movie spree so with those releases we're going to wind it down but i'm so excited that uh honestly i'm excited that i get to finish forever night because i've never finished the tv series that third season was always more than i could pay it was always hard to find but now it's all in one box 12 dvds I'm excited about Mothra making its Blu-ray debut, and I am also very excited about more Andy Sedaris in HD. So, guys, what are you going to pick up? What have you picked up? Uh, just talk about this stuff in the comments below, and I appreciate you doing so. So, until next time, take care, and I will catch you later.